Hello, welcome back to the shed. Today I'm going to be working on my new motorcycle. Here is my new motorcycle and isn't it pretty? And what I want to do is relocate these LED lights that I've installed. Right now I have them mounted directly on the radiator. It's a very convenient spot, easy place to make them, uh, mount them because of the screws here. But in the event of a minor tip over, probably end up wrecking the radiator and that's not a very sensible idea so what I've decided to do is make some frame sliders which will mount here and incorporate a light mount into those so at this point I would like to show you my big rod there it is isn't that nice it's got some heft to it and pretty reasonable girth look can't even get my hand around it um, so this is Delrin, which is a, a quite tough plastic, quite a strong plastic. And the idea is that I will make some long bosses that fit into the frame here, um, one on each side. Those will act as a safety device in the event of a tip over and prevent too much damage to the bike, I hope. And also then provide a mounting point for the lights. Now you can buy these and they're not that expensive to buy. Um, but I like to make my own stuff. Plus I want to incorporate a particular feature for the lights anyway. So stick around, watch me play with my shaft and uh, let's have some fun with it. Well, let's take a look at the drawing of the part. Uh, as you can see, pretty simple. This is going to be turned from a piece of three and a half inch diameter Delrin and very simple. We're going to turn the OD first, uh, then we will come back and turn these two steps to length and to diameter and drill this through hole as far through as I can get. This, the length of this part is such that a normal jobber's drill bit won't get all the way through. But since this is not a dimensionally critical part, what I'll do is drill this hole and then turn around, hold on this diameter here in a collet chuck, which I'll set up to run very true and then drill from the other side. And I'm very confident that I'll be able to get this counterbore and this hole to line up so closely that it will make no difference, uh, especially since this is just a big clearance bore for a bolt to go through. And then once that's done, I'll put a radius on here. Uh, I'm gonna use a um, radius bit for a router. Uh, since this is just plastic, I think a, a router bit will save me having to grind a tool and we'll easily cut that and then once that's done it'll be over to the mill to drill the cross hole make the little counterbore in the bottom and this counterbore in the top and that will be it nice and simple all right off to the lathe okay and off we go just facing the end clean here i'm using a carbide insert that's used for aluminum slash aluminium usually but the edges are such that it cuts really nicely on this delrin what we're doing here is just turning down the ends to the two reduced diameters for the end bosses and now turning the main body to diameter the piece in the chuck will get turned when this part is turned around for the next operations. Now center drill. and drill the first part of the through hole. Taking it as far as I can 
but not letting the flutes go all the way into the part. little deeper and add a chamfer in a few places. Quick test fit of the part before I finish off all the details. Um, on this side the frame doesn't give the same clearance around the head as on the other side, which is why you have to have this step in here. So this goes in here. Oh, that's perfect. So you can see there's clearance between the fin and the boss here. Now oh, that's very nice. That was, you know what? I think I'm just going to leave it this full length. Looks a bit odd, I suppose, having a massive piece of plastic on the frame. I think it's one of those things you just won't see after it's been on there for a short while. Anyway, we'll call that good. Get this finished off. Back to the lathe and I've got the collet chuck installed and trued up to within five tenths. And this way I should easily be able to get the through holes to line up and can clean the OD up easily. See how that blends very smoothly. Whoops. Well, that doesn't help any. Let's get that out of there. In um, this with metal, we'd refer to this as swarf. As it is, I think I'm. I think I'm just going to refer to it as a merkin. Give you something to Google later on if you don't know what one of those is. Just don't do it on your work computer. Okay, we're just going to take off five thou just to blend it all in. I suppose I could have just turned this whole diameter here at this stage, but whatever. And now I'll send to drill the opposite end. Pilot drill. Here I'm using a wood router bit which is more than sufficient to get a reasonable radius on the end of this part since it's just plastic. And the little bearing there works the same way as it does on a table router. Helps stop me going too far in with the uh, tool. The brush is not for coolant, it's just to get the chips out of the way so that I can see what's going on. Now this is a three quarter inch drill with a very badly ground end, I didn't do that, just how I inherited it. Um, but the delrin is so easy to cut that this removes the bulk of the material quickly and easily even with a really badly ground end on it. Just using the hand wheel on the tailstock to control the depth. And now using a boring bar just to finish the diameter of the counter bore and to give it a flat bottom. Over to the mill now and I'm just using the edge finder 
on the collet block to find the center line. There you are. Touch off on one side. By touching off on each side of the block I can use the half function of the DRO to quickly locate zero. Touch off on the other. And use the half function on the DRO to establish the center line. Which is there. I can believe that. And now touch off on the back side of the large diameter to establish position of the cross hole and counter. I'm actually going to touch off on the back face here because I know the hole has to be one inch from this face. Thou is the center. So now and drilling through. A standard length jobber drill was just long enough to push all the way through the part. The flutes do, in fact, end up getting blocked off, but the uh, large counter bore going through the part provides relief for the chips. So this wasn't a big problem. It's not a good way of doing it. You certainly uh, shouldn't do this in metal parts. And this is a counter boring bit. And same is true here. The flutes actually end up getting buried, but the chip relief comes from the large through counter bore. What I should really have done was just uh, used a uh, boring head. And if this had been a metal part, I certainly would have done. But the Delrin is very forgiving. It has uh, lubricative properties, so to speak. Now the part has been turned 180 degrees, which of course is easy using the collet block. And I'm using a three quarter inch end mill just to do a spot face, uh, which is where uh, an adapter part will be located to suspend the light fixture. Okay, got these finished up and installed. I made a couple of brass caps to just finish them off. We'll take a look. As you can see, I machined brass plugs top and on the side just to stop any anything getting in there that I don't want in there. And I think that's worked out pretty well. Somebody did point out to me that in the event of a tip over the the lights are likely going to get destroyed uh, but i'm not very concerned about that these particular lights were 30 dollars a pair and really they're on just to make me more visible to people so what i'll do now is uh, fire it up and let's see how how they look in the dark okay there you are you can see the lights on the two frame sliders. I think they look all right. What I'm going to do now is start the bike and uh, we'll see how the lights look.
Okay, let's try it without the uh, shop lights on. That makes quite a difference. The main purpose for these two extra lights is just to make me more obvious to car drivers, uh, but they will throw extra light at night. I'll move the camera around now and show you what it looks like from the uh, rider perspective. Lights on, lights off. So as you can see, even though these are a cheap $30 pair of LED lights, they do add quite a lot to it. So overall, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. If, uh, if you want a set of these, they'd be very easy to make. I'd recommend just buying a set of import uh, frame sliders for this bike, and then you could probably use a hand drill to modify those and uh, make whatever you need to hang the lights off the bottom of the frame sliders. So anyway, I think it's a neat solution. I like them. I'm happy with them. Uh, there's not many options in that area for places to hang the lights off, and it's better than hanging them off the radiator. So anyway, that's a success, and I'll call that good. See you out on the road. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, why not hit that like and subscribe button? Thanks again. Be safe and well wherever you are.